Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good afternoon to all viewers. It is a great pleasure to welcome all viewers to the 13th series of Research and Innovation Webinar, School of Electrical Engineering. My name is Sherry, the moderator for today's session. This program is brought to you live from School of Electrical Engineering, Faculty of Engineering, University Technology Malaysia's Facebook. Without further ado, I would like to invite Professor Dr. Muhammad Kamal Ibrahim, the Associate Chair of Research and Academic Staff, to give a short opening as well as introduce our guest speaker for today, Dr. Noor Asni Zamurad, the Head of Advanced RF and Microwave Research Group. Over to you, Prof. Thank you very much, Puan Sherry Huzaima, for introducing this event. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and salam sejahtera to all viewers. Thank you once again to all viewers that follow this webinar through our FB Live School of Electrical Engineering. My name is Muhammad, Professor Muhammad Kamal Ibrahim. I'm the Associate Chair of Research and Academic Staff School of Electrical Engineering, Faculty of Engineering, University of Technology Malaysia. Our topic today is entitled Research Trends in Microwave and Millimeter Wave Devices that will be given by our Head of Research Group Advanced RFM Microwave. Dr. Nasniza, before she gave her presentation, I would like to introduce about our speaker today. And don't forget to share, like, and comment our FB Live School of Data Engineering. Dr. Noras Niza Murad obtained her first degree in electric engineering in the year 2001 from University of Technology Malaysia, majoring in telecommunication. Shortly after graduated, she joined UTM as a tutor attached to the Department of Radio Communication Engineering or RAISED Faculty of Electric Engineering, University of Technology Malaysia. She received her Master's Electrical Engineering in 2003 from the same university and later has been appointed as a lecturer in April 2003. She joined Emerging Devices Technology Group in the University of Birmingham, UK, and obtained her PhD in 2011 for research on micromachine millimeter wave circuits under supervision of Professor Lancaster. She attached to HID Global for one year under research and development, specifically working on RFID tech design, testing, and development. Her research interests include antenna design for RF and microwave communication systems, millimeter wave circuits design, RFID, and antenna beam forming. Currently, Dr. Noras Niza Murad is a senior member of IEEE, member of Antenna and Propagation, APMTTM Simulation Chapter, and head of Advanced RF and Microwave Group at the School of Electrical Engineering, University of Indonesia. Without further delay, I would like to invite Dr. Noor Asniza Murad, Head of Advanced RF and Microwave Group, to give her webinar the title on Research Trends in Microwave and Millimeter Wave Devices. Over to you, Dr. Noor Asniza. Uh, <clears throat> Assalamualaikum and good afternoon. Thank you, Professor Dr. Muhammad Kamal and Puan Sherry for the introduction. So I'm here today representing Advanced RF uh, and microwave research group to talk about research trend in microwave and millimeter wave devices. So before we go to the topic, I would like to introduce the members of Advanced RFM research group. There are seven of us, me myself leading the group and we have Professor Dr. Muhammad Kamal Abdurrahim himself, an expert in various antenna technologies and other RFM active and passive devices. Dr. Muhammad Rijal Hamid, expert especially in reconfigurable and filtena. Dr. Muhammad Fairuz Muhammad Yusuf, uh, which research interest is more on refractory antenna. Dr. Noor Asmawati Samsuri, expert in specific absorption rate in RF and microwave. Dr. Osman Ayub, expert in artificial magnetic conductor and absorbers. And Dr. Farid Zubair, expert in power amplifier. And Dr. Farid is currently on postdoctoral research attachment at University of British Columbia, Okanagan Campus, Canada. Other than the academic uh, staff, uh, we also have one assistant engineer and 16 ongoing PhD researchers. 
so far we have secured over 6 million research fund in cumulative at um at our uh, advanced rfm research group we have various researches especially in devices design it is included but not limited to planar and waveguide uh, structures uh, millimeter wave metamaterials reconfigurable filters and field thinner reflect array uh, specific absorption rate and also power amplifier so for this talk actually we aim for three objectives to introduce research at advanced rfm research group to welcome any collaboration and uh, research students as well as to introduce courses that we can offer therefore this talk we will start with an introduction to microwave and millimeter wave which are basically on electromagnetic frequency spectrum. This would give an insight to what is the frequency we are talking about, especially to those not in RF and microwave background. Then I will proceed to research in advanced RFM uh, research group, started with low frequency and up to higher band at millimeter wave. I will start with ultra high frequency band talking about RFID and digital TV. Then I will go to other microwave band talking about planar antennas, fractals, metamaterials, reflect arrays, medical applications, body area network antenna, as well as specific absorption rate. I will go through millimeter wave devices before end the session with uh, courses that we may offer. So let's go to the electromagnetic spectrum, which is um, actually comprised of all frequency of electromagnetic radiation that propagate energy and travel through space in the form of waves. The longer the wavelengths with lower frequency make up the radio spectrum, sorry, longer wavelength, uh, which is at lower frequency, make up the radio spectrum uh, where shorter wavelengths with higher frequencies make up the optical spectrum. This frequency range is divided into separate, um, separate band, uh, which are called by different names, uh, such as radio waves, microwave, infrared, visible light, ultraviolet, X-rays, and gamma rays. Gamma rays and X-rays, uh, also uh, and also high ultraviolet, are classified as ionizing radiation, as their photons may uh, have enough energy to ionize atoms, causing a chemical reaction that may give immediate effect to the DNA. Non-ionizing radiation does not carry enough energy to break molecule bonds and ionize atoms. This is not to say that non-ionizing radiation can cause injury to humans, but the injury injury is generally uh, limited to thermal damage like burns. Based on the recent in-depth review of scientific literature, the WHO concluded that current evidence does not confirm the existence of health consequences from exposure to low-level electromagnetic fields. However, some gaps in knowledge about uh, biological effects exist and need uh, further research. So further research are of interest on biological effect due to low EMF exposure. EMF means that electromagnetic field exposure from transmission lines, for example, wireless communication system, and we also have exposure from household appliances, as well as other transmission system, including a smart meter. Therefore, other than studying on how to radiate EMF, we also study on the specific absorption rate and how to shield from EMF radiation to avoid a prolonged close exposure. So electromagnetic wave is manipulated to transfer energy wirelessly so that distance communication can be made possible. You can receive call on your phone due to signal that sent to your mobile through the air. So in order to transmit information wirelessly, we need an antenna that can be interfaced to change the electrical current into electromagnetic waves in free space. Antennas can be found in our surrounding. For instance, in the car, we have different antennas that, that is used for GPS, Wi-Fi, AM and FM for the radios and TV as well as uh, for Bluetooth. The GPS antenna would capture GPS frequency signal whenever you ask for navigation to your destination. The AM and FM antenna will capture the particular frequency signal whenever you turn on uh, your radio. Each application has its own operating frequency and standards. The antenna must be designed at specific frequency and the dimension is commonly in inverse proportional to the frequency. For a system that should operate at different frequencies, multiple antenna may be needed. But we may design a single antenna with multiple operation, therefore multiple antenna is not necessary. For wireless communication that may be in common 
uh, views of uh, telecommunication towers, we may need an antenna for different connection, point to point, point to multipoint, which may consider different radiation properties. So we may want to design a very directive high gain antenna for point to point communication. This a longer distance signal reception can be possible. For point to point, uh, sorry, point to multipoint, we may opt for omnidirectional antenna that has 360 degrees radiation but with low gain as the power is spread. Okay, and now people are talking about 5G com uh, communications with wider bandwidth for higher capacity and higher, da higher data speed. With 5G, we may have vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle communication that may avoid congestion and provide better traffic. We may have a smart health system, better water quality, smart grids, and better security and surveillance. So talking about this 5G, we may heard about the implementation at 3.5 gigahertz medium band and later 26 or 28 gigahertz millimeter wave band. So millimeter wave band offer high bandwidth to support high capacity as well as data speed. However, there is an issue of interferences and thus the transmission should be optimized. MIMO or multiple input, multiple output and beamforming is widely suggested for millimeter wave 5G communication and thus we at Advanced RF and microwave have designed um, and developed beamforming structures uh, at millimeter wave. So now let us look at research trend uh, on microwave and millimeter wave devices we have at Advanced RFM Research Group. First, we look at RFID. RFID uh, is radio frequency identification system, which allow data transfer wirelessly, and it depends on electromagnetic wave coupling. There are many applications of RFID, but the most common, I guess, to us may be in Malaysia tolling system. It is, sorry, it is also applied in retail. If you see the label up there with printed barcode, barcode there is actually an RFID inlay embedded inside the label. The physical system consists of tag and reader. For talk and listen system, the reader would transmit a signal and then listen to the feedback of the text. So for UHF, the feedback is in terms of backscattering signals. So if you are going through a tooling, our tooling system, you you actually have we actually have a reader that capture uh, that listen to the text that have been on your uh, vehicle. So the text actually contain of antenna and chip. The antenna will capture energy that enough to turn on the chip. Therefore, the antenna must have a conjugate impedance of a particular chip to transfer enough energy. So in designing RFID tag antenna, it is not to be common 50 ohms fed, but depends on the chip impedance. Once the antenna is integrated to the chip, it is encased to form an inlay. So you can see an example of an inlay uh, down here. So. The inlay can be a wet inlay with ready to stick glue or dry inlay. So in advanced RFI research group, we have uh, several studies on RF, uh, RFID at UHF and future higher uh, band. We have studied a flexible and wearable RFID tech for wireless monitoring system where the antenna is patterned on PVC material and encased in a flexible PDMS. The antenna is meandered in bow tie shape, so it is tested with different thickness of the encased material. And it is found out that if we have 8 mm thickness of PDMS, it will create a stable distance uh, from the skin and thus the read range is observed to be 1.5 meter, the same performance as if the tag is not on the body. We also study on inductive coupled tags where the chip is connected to an inductor loop and inductively coupled energy from a dipole antenna. The, the advantage of the, the inductive couple, uh, couple feed is to avoid direct contact with the antenna and thus reduce the risk of mechanical stress and electrostatic discharge that may cause damage to the chip. Inductive couple basically depends on the strength of magnetic field that coupled to the loop and we know that it is inversely proportional to the distance. Therefore, the distance and the area of inductive loop, if it, the inductive loop is important to effectively couple the energy. In other projects, we have, um, we also have 
uh, RFID better text with AMC where we have uh, an antenna on top and we put AMC at the back so that it can be placed on metal. In other projects, we have chipless RFID studying on the three transmission method and backscattering method. Without the chip, it can reduce the overall production cost. The antenna is designed to have different resonance to create a code that can replace the barcode, yet it does not need to be in line of sight for detection. And we also designing the reader to read the text. Still on the UHF band, we also work on digital TV antenna. TV is common to us and a couple years ago, we slowly moved from analog signal to digital signal to digital system. For old TV without analog to digital converter, one may need a digital box with an indoor antenna for signal reception. The main purpose of this work is to replace uh, the rooftop TV antenna to indoor antenna at the size of digital box. So we designed a load periodic antenna that covered the whole digital TV spectrum and then we used fractal techniques to reduce the overall dimension. So here we have a video. Uh, in this video, you can see that when, when the antenna is connected, uh, the reception is good and when the antenna is uh, disconnected, then the, the screen goes static. Okay, when they connect again, then the, uh, you can see the movie again, yeah. Okay, going a bit uh, higher, above one gigahertz, we have studied on-body communication. This studies at the beginning are focusing on the application for search and rescue teams such as firefighters with electronic gears for communications. As we can see here, this is a jacket with artificial magnetic conductor, AMC, on the top, on the surface uh, to avoid radiation absorption to the uh, wearer body from wearable devices. The jacket material is fleece while the conductor is shielded textile. Antennas are placed on top of AMC to see on-body re uh, retransmission and absorption rate. So we tested uh, using uh, different types of antenna. We have uh, narrow band antenna and wide band. So the antenna is placed on the AMC and we can see the uh, good transmission on copolar direction. We also studied uh, this specific uh, absorption into the body without into the body so the antenna is placed on the chest and it is clear showing that the higher absorption into the body without uh, the amc compared to the absorption due to antenna radiation on top of the amc the red area that you see in this figure shows the highest absorption rate into the body so this project aims the use of wearable gears for fit firemen and on operation Okay, other than that, we also work on on-body textile antenna for medical monitoring system. This system will transfer data on oxygen level and pulse wirelessly to the monitoring system. The patient can wear the oximeter attached to the transmitter and the antenna, and then the signal will be captured and displayed on the computer system. Thus, it can be monitored without attending the patient all the time. We actually have developed different flexible and textile antenna, especially for wearable purposes. We have uh, we have shielded conductive textile pattern on fleece uh, and fleece engines. We also have embroidered antenna using copper and silver yarn, and we studied with different densities. We also have uh, here the copper and silver. Uh, sorry, we also have here the copper and silver engines with triple band antenna down there. Okay, the band is justified with different size of dipole and they are put on fractals to reduce the overall dimensions. The antenna performance then are measured with different conditions such as crumple, deformation and wetness and some antennas do have affected with uh, all those conditions. Here we have studied different materials for textile antenna. We studied the performance using copper tape, 
copper textile sheeted material as, as well as embroidered with copper yarn on flannel material. Each material does give a slight different properties to the entity and some optimization can be made, for example, on the yarn density and the glue. With all those uh, textile and flexible antennas, we expand uh, to medical study approaches. Okay, here we have antenna pattern using shielded material on transdermal pad. An AMC at the back to protect the patient from radiation absorption. We have studied the performance of the antenna to transfer ECG data and it is working well. The performance doesn't change with wetness, but slight frequency shifts is observed when it is tested with sweating light liquid. This is expected from the sodium trace even after it is dried. And the sodium might change a bit on the, give a change on the uh, material properties. Okay, we also have here the implantable telemetry antenna and it is tested in liquid-based phantom and muscle-like beef to mimic the real transmission medium. Different medium does shift the operation frequency and thus optimization must be done to enhance the performance. We also studied the performance of on-body antenna with implanted method in the body. The performance is studied with different crumpling conditions. The radiation absorption rate is observed to be very high in the area with metal implant and it is advisable to avoid the area even if you put your phone in pocket with other metals the radiation absorption into your body is very high so avoid it if it is possible for planar antenna our research emerged from basic Patch to different technologies such as fractals, metal material, reconfigurable, and reflectories. Here we have cock fractal design back in 2003, and then we have expanded with different uh, with different uh, fractals such as Pinot fractals, Minkowski, and others. So this fractal technology is one of the method when compact antenna is needed. We have uh, here different types of metal material antenna. Metal material is a structure that can give properties that is uncommon in nature. It is common basic rules that the direction of wave propagation is in the direction of electric field E cross with the magnetic field H. But you may make it inverse if you're able to create a structure that would change the permittivity or probability to be uh, in inverse. Thus, it can be manipulated to control the frequency or the wave. So basically, the antenna is designed with different, what we call a unit cell. So the most common is slit ring resonator and its complement. So here uh, on the left side, in the early days, uh, sorry, in the early days, uh, metal materials are known for its narrow band and to achieve wide band is a challenge. So on top left, we have three unit cells that give us multiple frequency. Uh, we have expanded study to achieve uh, white band material antenna and even working on reconfigurable. So reconfigure antenna is a single antenna that can be reconfigured either to operate at different frequencies or different pattern and polarization. Therefore, you can have a single antenna in a system that work at, the, at different frequencies or radiation properties. So it can be done by biasing the antenna part to tune at desired frequency or properties. So the biasing can be done using as simple as diode or even with MEM switches. The biasing is a challenge part in reconfigure structure. Here we have a frequency reconfigure antenna with capability to turn between wide band to narrow band and to multi band. The basic design is wide band loaded uh, monopole and slot is added with biasing to tune the configuration. This single antenna can be used for different applications for wireless line, wireless LAN and wireless MAX. Here also, uh, there is a photo of Dr. Muhammad Rijal with his frequency reconfigure antenna, which the photo has been in front page of IET electronic letters 10 years ago. Here we also have a log periodic antenna that can be reconfigured to different frequencies with the biasing circuit at the back. The patch is made with different dimension and arranged along the line. 
Other than the frequency reconfigure, we also study on pattern and polarization reconfigurable. Again, switches are implemented. Here on the uh, on the left, we have a circular patch with slots. Switches are placed at the slots. Uh, the switch are turned on and off uh, to activate and deactivate deactivate the slot so that it can be reconfigured to either right hand circular polarization or left hand circular polarization. On the right, we have four pattern uh, four petal structure with switches connected to each at the center. By turning on and off, by turning on and off, we can choose the element to activate and create pattern that can receive or transmit signal in desired direction. At Advanced RF Microwave Root Group, we also have studied on high gain reflect array. For instance, this work aim for wide band uh, high gain performance. High gain antenna is normally designed to achieve longer distance communication with high signal intensity. Frequency selective method is chosen here where multi layers of FSS structures are aligned and created a very directive beam for a wide band frequencies. Other than antenna, we also studied of filter design and a combination of filter and antenna to form a filter. Filter is a device that easily say, uh, remove unwanted signal. After an antenna receives a signal from free space, we may want to filter out unwanted signal before changing it to form of information that we may understand. Here are some examples of metamaterial filter. Sorry. Okay. Here are some examples of metamaterial filter and filter. By making antenna and filter in one structure, we may reduce the losses that may be caused by discontinuity at the connection. By implementing the better material, we can reduce the overall dimension and improve the performance. We also studied on electromagnetic band gap structure that one may see it as a filter. We can suppress the signal in certain frequency and can be used in improving the antenna performance by eliminating unwanted spurious signal around the antenna that we design. Okay, as mentioned at the beginning of this talk, there is a gap in knowledge of biological effect due to low radiation that can cause tissue heating. Thus, we studied the probability of shielding a building by using absorbers and reflectors. Here is a transparent stop band that can act as reflector and absorber. It used a frequency selective method with uh, fractals technology to produce such a very nice pattern and yet transparent to put on glass window, glass window, for example, so that you can shield your room from outside radiation. So other than that, we also have a very thin absorbers here with a very high ability to absorb to absorb electromagnetic field above 95%. A circular unit cell is chosen so that it is insensitive to the polarization of the waves and operate at a very wide angle. And this is how we measure the absorption uh, by putting the absorbers underneath uh, a very directive horn in dinners. Uh, one horn is used in transmitting and the other one is uh, used for receiving. And then the area is covered with conventional absorbers. So whatever the signal uh, coming to the, uh, the, the receiving horn is considered the signal uh, that is transmitting from the first horn. We also have research on power amplifier. The work is basically looking for most efficient and linear power amplifier. Efficiency and linearity are two main challenge in power amplifier design. With a very efficient and linear power amplifier, one may have a prolonged uh, battery lifetime. In advanced RF and microwave research group, we also Study, uh, have a project on sustaining the wireless communication in rural and sparse area. It is known that with digital transformation, uh, the need for internet access is crucial. 
even school children nowadays need an internet to access for teaching and learning materials. There are some areas where internet access are very limited. Therefore, this project aims to create a sustainable wireless communication with mesh network. The energy will be harvested to sustain the access point, especially in remote areas where electricity is also limit limited. We use MicroTIC here as the access point to test the ability to power up using harvested signal and then communicate between the points. For the communication between the points, we have tested here um, with uh, we replaced the omnidirectional monopole uh, from previous uh, figure with our design array antenna and we test point to point reception. So now let's move to higher band uh, millimeter wave. As mentioned earlier, millimeter wave is more affected to environment. It cannot travel through building, building and tends to be absorbed by trees and rain. Therefore, it is suggested to have mesh network with multiple backbones to avoid the obstacle. In order to do that, beamforming and MIMO are the most uh, talked about in millimeter wave band for 5G. So beamforming is a technique where the beam of an array antenna can be steered to transmit signal in specific direction. That's mean it's only cover the that specific area. So therefore it could avoid interferences from uh, others. It is normally controlled by the array feeding network. For physical feeding, different methods can be used such as uh, Rotman lens, Nolan network or a common button metric. So button metric is an array antenna feeding network consists of couplers, crossovers, and phase shifters. The power and phase are controlled to form the antenna beam in desired direction. With such many components, many research done not just to reduce the overall dimension, but also to reduce the crosstalks between the lines in the network, especially at millimeter wave, where spirit signal from the feeding lines gives significant effect to antenna performance. You may find the early study on the effect of feeding line in a book uh, titled Advanced Mic Millimeter Wave Technologies, Antennas Packaging and Circuit published in 2009. It could be one of the earliest books published in the topic of millimeter wave antennas and packaging. Therefore, we choose to study a low-loss waveguide antenna beamforming structure. First, we develop a waveguide slot antenna on broad side. So it is um, is radiated in one side. Then we add the slots on the other side to form a dual beam radiation. So our future aims is to have a twin beam antenna. You may find about twin beam antennas in certain telecommunication white papers as a solution to uh, double the capacity or boost up the capacity in limited space for uh, multiple antennas. So we designed this antenna to operate this antenna to operate at 28 gigahertz and fabricated using selective uh, laser melting 3D metal print. The antenna overall length is 8 cm with 8 slots on each broad side. The material used here is aluminum alloy which gives a very lightweight yet a very sturdy structure. Then we, design, uh, we start to design a totally waveguide feeding network. A waveguide is basically a hollow pipe which guide the electromagnetic signal within the hollow. This is a hybrid coupler designed with cavity resonators inside the waveguide. So a hybrid coupler basically uh, has two, uh, four ports, one input, two outputs, and one isolation. A microstrip coupler is shown in a small photo up there. We transfer the design to be in the form of waveguide with resonators and coupling iris. In this case, we want to divide the, the input power equally on the output ports with phase different of 90 degrees to allow phase progression in later bathymetric design. Therefore, we control it by controlling the iris that ju justify the coupling between the resonators. If you can see in the photos of gold color structures, those are couplers available in market, which normally built by milling method. And the two pieces silver structures are our couplers that 3D printed. The coupler is made into two pieces before it put together to form a working coupler. So after a success design of this coupler, 
we also design a waveguide crossover and phase shifter based on the same method with the waveguide coupler. Then we integrate the components, four couplers, two crossovers, and two phase shifters to form this uh, buckler matrix. We have tried fabricating the structure in two pieces as well as one piece. Both show no significant difference, showing that even printing in one piece, the residues inside the hollow is removed clearly and created the same cavity resonators. The output of the button man is connected to dual beam slotted waveguide antenna, making it to be fully waveguide structures. The results shows that the dual beam from the slotted waveguide antenna are tilted with different input ports activated, which means this single antenna can cover communication to two different areas. We also 3D print other components using selective laser belting, additive manufacturing technology, uh, using aluminium alloy and cobalt chromium material. Definitely, uh, aluminium alloy gives a very lightweight and sturdy structure. We saw some discrepancies between simulated and measurements, for example, on the gain performance, and we expect that from surface roughness that we can observe on the structure. From all the researchers shown, we received a number of awards and recognition. These are some of the medals we won from the exhibition and showcases. Inatex, Itex, Pencipta, and also have Professor Dr. Muhammad Kamal, who won the top research scientist Malaysia in antenna technology. And these are awards for absorbers by Dr. Osman Ayub. And our triple band textile antenna that I showed just now won the best of the best award in Pichita 2013. Other textile, textile antennas have been in several media coverage as one of the early work on textile antenna in Malaysia. We also been in electronic media coverage, uh, RTM, Astro, as well as, well as in Hari, Malaysia Harini slots. So, we also, uh, so before I end the talk, I would like to welcome any interested, anyone interested in our courses module. Uh, we have module in modulation and demodulation, module transmission, Propagation, antenna, RF circuit design, microwave, satellite communication, wireless from first to fifth generation. And we would also we would like we also would like to thank our international collaborators uh, from University of Birmingham. Uh, we have also uh, Prof Bulan and Prof Muhammad from Antartu Universities. We have Prof Himdi from University of Wens. Prof. Prof. Sunti and Prof. Monai from King Mongkut Institute, uh, Prof. Omar Ramahi from University of Waterloo. Um, we also have collaborators from University of Concordia. Uh, we have Dr. Bamba and Dr. Levy from Telcom University. We also have collaborators from uh, in British Columbia University, uh, from Universitas Indonesia, from Kyoto University. Uppsala University and also Loughborough University. Uh, with that, if you uh, if you are interested to collaborate or have any other further uh, specific questions, you can uh, you are welcome to email me at norasniza at utm.my and I will direct you to the right person. With that, thank you for listening and back to you, Professor Dr. Mohamed Kamal. Again, I would, like, I would like to take this opportunity to thank you very much to Dr. Norasni Zamurat for sharing a very informative session. Now, I would like to open for any question and answer session to all viewers. You can post your question to the Facebook comment. Okay, uh, maybe while waiting for the questions to be asked, Maybe I have one question here. Uh, basically, what are the challenges in designing devices in millimeter wave compared to microwave? Maybe Dr. Asniza can explain it. Okay, when um, when we are comparing devices uh, design at microwave and millimeter wave, we may have found some issues such as uh, dielectric loss, metallic loss, period radiation, and surface wave issues. 
So it is a challenge at millimeter wave to optimize uh, design to be low loss. So we have we have seen many planar structures at microwave, but at millimeter wave, some properties may not work well. So the selection of material is very important. Having high dielectric constant may give a significant effect to an antenna performance, and thus we may we we can find um, many works with air suspended patch antenna or part of the dielectric under the patch removed to enhance the performance. But physical structure of uh, the patch itself will remain suspended in real. Thus, uh, extra support must be designed. But the extra support has to uh, not to give an extra effect to the antenna performance. Uh, spurious signal is another issue from antenna feeding network. Uh, it would give a significant effect to overall antenna performance. The some research may go for low loss structure like a wave guide and substrate integrated uh, wave guide at millimeter wave. Fabrication tolerance is another issue. Uh, it is a challenge as we know device structure at millimeter wave uh, are very uh, compact. For instance, in our wave guide structure, we made it into two pieces before reconnect them because one device uh, to become one device. And it is another challenge to minimize uh, the effect of connected line, the line where we want to connect the two pieces. The connection line must be designed to be at position with minimum effect to the overall performance. So I think those are the things that give challenge in designing millimeter wave devices compared to microwave. Okay, thank you, Dr. Noras Niza. Okay, there is this one question from Sin Men saying, may I know for the fabrication of flexible antenna, how to deposit the metal pattern on the flexible fabric substrate? Okay, um, right. Uh, we have different type of material that we use. When we deposit the metal pattern on the flexible fabric substrate, we normally use the glue. That's why I... Um, uh, so the glue itself must be, um, it, it would sometimes give you uh, some effect, right? Uh, we deposit using a glue. So sometimes we already have uh, glue at the back of the material. So it's something like a sticker. So you can stick on the substrate. Hope that answer the question. Okay, thank you. Okay, maybe I have one question to ask. With the losses at higher band frequency, why we are moving to millimeter wave? As you know that at high frequency, the losses is very high. So why we move to millimeter wave? Um, the answer, I guess, is the bandwidth. So at a high frequency, and um, it can offer a high bandwidth. So we know that from channel equation, the capacity is depending on the bandwidth and signal to noise ratio. So at millimeter wave, they offer high bandwidth and thus we can, it can support higher capacity with uh, better speed as well. So the losses is a challenge in uh, structure design. Okay, thank you. So we have another one, Amin Azhari. Uh, hi, Dr. and Prof. Millimeter wave suitable with beam forming tenet. What about previous? Can they apply with beam forming? Uh, what about previous technology? Can they apply with beam forming? Right. Uh, my personal view uh, in previous uh, beam forming, so bathymetric devices and so is already exist in market. So it can be applied uh, in the beamforming can be applied in uh, certain other technology. I think um, where uh, you can you want to uh, avoid interferences, um, or uh, for example, uh, what we call it. Yeah, where the applications where the you want to either to make it uh, very efficient a uh, communication between. Uh, two devices or communication between the base station and device for example and the specific area for example so i think it can be applied in uh, different uh, previous technology 
Okay, all right. Uh, so we don't have any more. Yeah, then uh, one more. Is it possible to use textiles at millimeter wave? Um, good question. Uh, actually, I don't have a firm answer to this. Uh, because at millimeter wave, each materials uh, give a significant effect to your device. So choosing the right material is very important. And if you have a textile, you know that it's not going to it's not going to be rigid, and the performance may change when uh, you have different surfaces, for example. Right. So uh, I'm not sure how to answer this. <laughs> Okay, maybe I think for the millimeter wave, the structure is very small. You need to very, very have a very high precision, you know, equipment to be, you know, to be deposit on your, you know, on the structure itself. So it can be used, but as long as you can have a very good techniques, I think should be no problem. Okay, all right. Uh, I think there is no more questions. Okay, once again, thank you. Oh, okay. So this is uh, unless we have because this answer from Dr. Osman Ayo, little wave by nature is very small, so maybe it's not really possible unless we have certain special materials, as I mentioned to you before. Okay, I think that's all for I mean that is the last question. Eh? With that question, that's the end of our webinar today. Okay, thank you very much to Dr. Noras Niza Murad, head of Advanced RF and Microwave Group. Eh? Now, I would like to pass over to Puan Cherry for the closing remarks and introduce our next week webinar series on research and innovation, School of Electrical Engineering, University of Technology, Malaysia. Over to you, Puan Cherry. Okay, thank you, Prof. Kamal, and thank you also to our guest speaker, Dr. Noor Asni Zamurat, for the interesting topic just now. Thank you, Doctor. All right, viewers, we are at the end of our session today. Thank you all for taking up time to watch this live telecast. And for those who missed this live session, can watch the video again. Don't forget to like, comment, and share our Facebook and videos to your friends and colleagues. And please don't forget to join us next week, 15th of September 2020 at 2.30 p.m. for the next series of webinar with our guest speaker, Dr. Muhammad Azhar Abdul Razak, the head of Biomedical and Instrumentation Electronics Research Group on the topic Biomedical Research and its Application in Healthcare. All right, viewers, as usual, I will end the session with a quote. Speed is calculated as miles per hour, but life is calculated as miles per hour. So increase your smile and get extra mileage in life. Okay, dolls, see you all next week. Keep on smiling, stay safe, and keep your distance. Stay tuned. Wabilahi taufiq walidaya. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you.